Hello, I am Dr. Saira Sokwala and I am going to present type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease or heart and blood vessel disease. So as an introduction, what is diabetes? If you look at a person without diabetes, there is production of a hormone in the body called insulin and this is produced by an organ called the pancreas. So when you take this insulin to be a key, it actually fits into the door of a cell and this cell could be any cell. Uh, including a muscle cell or a liver cell or a fat cell or other cells of the body where insulin acts on. And when this insulin gets into the door, it opens it and it allows for glucose entry into the cell and this is necessary for energy production. Whereas in a person with diabetes, there is either decreased insulin production from the pancreas or for any reason this insulin fails to act on the cell and there is failure of opening of this door, there is no glucose which enters into the cell and there is decreased energy production. And basically what happens is there is increased glucose in the blood and also some of this comes out in the urine. So broadly looking at the types of diabetes, there are many many types of diabetes but broadly we can classify them as type 1, type 2 or gestational. Now we will not look at gestational diabetes because this is a diabetes associated with pregnancy. When you look at type 1 diabetes, this is where there is absolutely no insulin being produced by the body and this cell is located in the pancreas and is the one which produces insulin but in type 1 diabetes it is not able to produce any insulin. The type 1 diabetes accounts for about 5 to 10 percent of the total diabetic patients and these patients are usually lean, slim and uh, they depend on insulin for survival and uh, basically and these patients are usually less than uh, 35 years of age. Whereas if you look at type 2 diabetes, it begins with the process of insulin resistance. And this means that for any reason, the insulin is not able to work on that door. And what happens is it's usually present in patients, in people who are uh, fat or obese and uh, who have a big tummy such that insulin, uh, there is a lot of fat and insulin cannot work on the body cells. So because of that, this is the phenomenon called insulin resistance and because of that initially the pancreas produces increasing amounts of insulin but eventually it gets fatigued and starts producing less insulin. So the combination of less insulin and insulin resistance is what is termed as type 2 diabetes. So what are the symptoms of diabetes? As we have seen there is decreased energy production so you will always feel tired, you will always feel hungry. You also are losing sugar in the blood, through the blood into the urine and with it there is a lot of water which accompanies and so you get frequent urination and because you are losing water you are always feeling thirsty. You might also have sudden weight loss. Some patients may present with complications of diabetes which could be sexual problems or vaginal infections in females or uh, numbness or tingling of the hands or feet, blurry vision or wounds that wouldn't heal. So we have, that introduces us to the complications of diabetes. So the complications of diabetes can be divided into macrovascular which means big vessel disease and microvascular which means small blood vessel disease. And the microvascular complications include diabetic eye disease, kidney disease, nerve disease among others. I will not focus more on that as today's focus is on the macrovascular complications and these are also known as cardiovascular disease. And these include stroke and patients present usually with one-sided weakness. Uh, you could have a heart attack. Heart diseases include mainly a heart attack or angina and high blood pressure. You can even have peripheral vascular disease. And this means that there is decreased blood flow going into the uh, foot or the hand and you can have death of that part of the body. And that's peripheral arterial or peripheral vascular disease. So what are the risk factors for cardiovascular disease? Basically, you can divide them into modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors, whereby the modifiable means that these are potentially alterable and uh, once you do alter them, you could slow down the disease process or even reverse it. And these include having a high uh, blood fat level or a serum lipid levels which are elevated. Having high blood pressure or hypertension, cigarette smoking, diabetes is a big risk factor and within diabetes, a poor control of blood glucose confers increased risk. 
Even having a sedentary lifestyle with no exercise, having stress or obesity, particularly abdominal, whereby if you've got a big tummy, you are at an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Even a poor diet with excessive intake of saturated fats, carbohydrates and salt increases your risk for cardiovascular disease. Moving on to the non-modifiable risk factors. This include increasing age, having a family history of cardiovascular disease and having a genetic composition which increases your risk of cardiovascular disease. So the basic concept of cardiovascular disease is atherosclerosis. And of note is in patients with diabetes, this concept is increased. This simply means athero means fat and sclerosis means thickening and narrowing. So it's fatty, thickening and narrowing of the blood vessels. If you look this as a normal cut section of an artery, you can see it's really quite clean. However, if for any reason there is a tear in the artery wall, and this situation occurs more frequently in patients with diabetes, especially if they've got high blood pressure or if patients have got increased fat in the circulation. So whenever there is a tear, there is fatty material which starts getting deposited in the vessel wall and causes narrowing of the blood vessel. So if there is a cut or a rupture in, the, in, in any part of this fatty material, then it causes a high chance of forming a clot in that area. And when there is a clot, you can see there is complete occlusion of the blood vessel. And when this occurs, if it occurs in the heart, there is decreased blood supply to that part of the heart which is being supplied by the blood vessel and that causes death of that part of the heart which is called as a myocardial infarction. If it occurs in the brain, it causes a stroke and if it occurs in the large blood vessels, it causes a peripheral arterial disease and it can cause gangrene or death of that part of the foot or the hand which is supplied by the blood vessel. So how do you reduce cardiovascular disease in type 2 diabetes? The basic answer is to control, control, control. And by control, we do not only mean good control of your blood glucose or blood sugars, but also your cholesterol, your blood pressure and other factors need to be put in place. So the basic step that your doctor would advise you on is lifestyle modification. And here the number one step is a healthy diet. You need to know that you need to eat well, eat the right balance and not just stop eating food altogether. So there is the concept of the eat well plate whereby your doctor will advise you depending on what your situation is on how to adjust this plate. So basic concept is that the, a huge portion, almost half of this plate should constitute fruits and vegetables either raw or cooked. You could have a portion constituting bread, rice, potatoes, pasta and a very small portion constituting fat, a small portion again constituting your proteins, milk and dairy products. The second po uh, point in lifestyle modification is exercise. So very, very simply put, there is this fit mnemonic, whereby F stands for frequency and you should aim at about 4 to 5 times per week of exercise and uh, your intensity should be to achieve about 60 to 80 percent of maximal heart rate. Now what you do is you calculate, your, you, you, you take your heart rate at the beginning of the exercise, then you do 220, subtract your age from it, that gives you your maximal heart rate and you should not go more than 80% of this maximal heart rate ideally. So your timing, you should be doing aerobic activity for approximately 20 to 30 minutes per day and what you need to know is that in a week approximately you should have done at least 150 minutes in the whole week. You should stop smoking at all costs and if lifestyle modification does not prevent or does not uh, achieve good control then your doctor will put you on medication and these are medic medications for diabetes which could include uh, tablets or insulin depending on the situation your doctor finds you in and what he chooses to put you on. When you have diabetes you need to achieve good control of your sugars and that can be done by monitoring your blood sugars regularly depending on how frequently your doctor tells you to and also by doing at least a 3 to 6 monthly check of your HbA1c which is a test which shows you your glucose control over the previous. Um, well other medicines still could be taken for blood pressure control, for blood cholesterol control and in some patients even as primary prevention that means before the attack has occurred or before the cardiovascular disease has occurred some doctors prescribe aspirin for patients at high risk. 
you should be on very good weight management which could be either by lifestyle modification alone by using tablets or even in some cases surgery now after you've had a heart attack there's the concept of secondary prevention to prevent a further attack and this is more or less similar to primary prevention just that in this there's the addition of aspirin for every patient who's had a, an attack unless if you do not tolerate aspirin then you'll be put on a similar medication the other uh, so the rest of them diabetes control blood pressure control cholesterol control exercise weight control and smoking are similar as in primary prevention just that the goals now are uh, more strict so to sum it all up to achieve a healthy heart a healthy brain and healthy feet arms what you need to do is and to prevent basically cardiovascular disease what you need to do in diabetes is achieve a good, good glucose control, achieve control of your other risk factors including blood pressure and cholesterol and eat healthy, do frequent exercising and there you are. You've got your healthy heart and a healthy you. Thank you very much for watching my video.